I'm not quite sure what hell looks like, but I'm not sure that it would be so much different. God, we're going to drown. And then I looked forward. I saw fire in the next car. A train hitting an automobile at a great crossing is the equivalent of a driver hitting a bird with an automobile. The train's going to win every time. ripped right down the side of the train car and, and just threw a big chunk of it off the side of the track. I was going to be crushed to death. I felt my body getting squashed and I knew I couldn't take any more. Clear the tracks. There's a car on the tracks. John Bunnell. In my 27 years in law enforcement, I've seen a lot of terrible accidents. But none are worse than train wrecks. Pound for pound, trains are the heaviest, the largest, and the fastest things on earth. When something goes wrong with a train, no one is safe. And when a car goes up against a train, the car is always the loser. Lexina, Kansas, 1997, 9.30 at night. This car is stuck on the tracks, and a freight train is barreling towards it at 50 miles an hour. If someone had been in the car, they'd be dead. It happened when this grandmother was driving her grandkids home and got mixed up. She came off the road and ended up stuck on the tracks. A police officer can't move the car and has the railroad call the locomotive. But the engineer's talking on the phone and can't be reached. Graham has the kids get their things, then watches as the car heads to the scrap heap. Canton, Ohio. You'd think a guy driving a tanker filled with gasoline over train tracks would be extra careful. But as this amateur video shows, you'd be wrong. Look how close the train comes to the rear of the tanker. All the engineer can do is blow his horn and pray. Cleveland, Ohio. A train buff is out shooting video of locomotives when a driver darts across the tracks. Watch this train hit him. This guy is so stupid, he's actually angry. In fact, he should thank his lucky stars. If he had been a split second later, he'd be a hood ornament on this train. Lafayette, Indiana. Even though these freight trains are moving slowly, they couldn't possibly stop if something got in their path. Including this 18-wheeler. The truck may be intimidating on the freeway, but it's no match for this train. How powerful are trains? Believe it or not, this one's only traveling five miles an hour, but it tosses the truck like a toy. Thankfully, the driver survived. No matter how dumb it seems, some people insist on betting their lives to save a few seconds at a crossing. This guy just makes it. That train's only 10 feet from the back bumper of his car. This guy is crazy enough. A speeding train's only eight seconds away. Then one more car races through the crossing. It's this kind of daredevil tactic that gets over 400 people killed every year. Crawford, Texas. A man was taping his family when he looked up and saw a truck stuck on the tracks behind his house. He knows the 415 is only seconds away. The 
truck explodes as the train hits it. It knocks over this telephone pole like a twig. Fortunately, the driver got out in time. Kent, Ohio. A man and his son waited for one train to clear, then pulled out onto the tracks. They never saw the second train coming. That's why the signs say, stop, look, and listen. It's the train you don't see that could take your life. These two were lucky and survived. Hundreds of people get killed at railroad crossings every year. To stay safe, remember, don't drive around Lord Gates. It's stupid and it's deadly. Don't race a train to the crossing. Unlike Blackjack, even if you tie, you lose. When the first train clears, always assume there's another train coming. And if your vehicle stalls, forget it. Saving that old jalopy isn't worth your life. Remember, you can't judge how fast a train is going just by looking. And it only takes a few minutes for it to pass. Waiting those minutes could save your life. It's devastating any time a train hits a car. But when a train hits an object that can't move, the threat to human life is even greater. Imagine the force of two trains colliding. Trains can be over a mile long and weigh 10,000 tons. When they smash into one another, the scale of the disaster is enormous, and what's left can look like a war zone. February 1996, St. Paul, Minnesota. A mile-long freight train loads up and heads down the grade into St. Paul. It stops a few times along the way, and the brakes are working just fine. But somewhere along the grade, the brakes go out and the train speeds out of control. The engineer knows the tracks lead straight into a freight yard. He calls ahead to get switched off the line. But the switches are controlled by timers, and the dispatcher is helpless to steer the train clear. The train is doing 50 miles an hour when it thunders into the yard and collides with three parked locomotives. A mile of freight train jumps the rails and plows toward a shed full of workers. Richard Vitek had just stepped outside. It sounded like thunder, rumbling, metals screeching, tearing up tracks. And when I seen the light glaring right at me and the roar it was making, and uh, I just ducked and figured I was dead. We had a runaway train come right through our entire yard. Uh, we got everything out of control. Half our building got fire. We had many people hurt. 44 cars and six locomotives derail in a colossal pile of twisted debris. What was once a freight train looks like a huge pile of crushed tin cans. The scene basically looked like a giant tornado had just gone through the area. I mean, there was wreckage everywhere, uh, large chunks of steel twisted. Uh, huge pieces of train cars strewn all over the place, wires down. It was just a scene of total destruction. Rescuers spent three hours trying to get VTEC out, but they didn't have anything that could move the enormous cars. Finally, they dug a hole underneath him and pulled him out from below. He spent a week in the hospital. How does he feel about trains? I don't go near them. I don't like them. I don't go near them. I still get a uh, uh, sick feeling when I go over rail railroad tracks. What could cause such a disaster? Was it sabotage? A bomb? No, in fact, there was a kink in the air hose that runs to the train's brakes. Only seven of 89 cars got the signal to stop. Days later, railroad authorities ordered the line to install emergency brakes to prevent such a disaster in the future. on train wrecks. Two trains collide on the same set of tracks. A freight train hauling propane explodes. And the most dramatic lesson about safety at crossings ever caught on tape.
that a head-on collision between two cars can be devastating. Now imagine two trains filled with passengers colliding at 100 miles an hour. No seatbelts, no airbags. What moments before had been a pleasant train ride is suddenly a nightmare. Passenger train wrecks are always catastrophic. These cars weren't hauling freight. They were filled with people. Making it worse, even if someone survives a train wreck, the car itself can become a vault survivors can't get out of as it sinks in a river or is engulfed in flames. Marshall, Texas. This passenger train derailed as it passed over a section of track where a train had derailed two years before. In the moments right after the wreck, an Amtrak employee shot this video of the passengers emerging. This woman wasn't expecting to get out of the train this way when she got on board. Here a family lifts her baby to safety. Minutes before, these people were enjoying a peaceful train ride. Now they wander by the twisted cars, wondering what went wrong. January 1987, Chase, Maryland. The engineer of three freight locomotives ignores two signals, warning him not to switch to another set of tracks. He pulls in front of an Amtrak train that's speeding up fast behind him. In the complex railroad system, two trains often share the same track without problems, but it depends on everyone following the rules. And this engineer had ignored them. He put his locomotives in the wrong place at exactly the wrong time. The Amtrak train was going over 100 miles an hour when it slammed into the locomotives. They exploded. Then the Amtrak cars slid down the rails. Experts said the force of the collision was bigger than a blast from 320 pounds of TNT, enough to level a city block. Within minutes, doctors and firefighters rushed to the scene and started helping the trapped survivors. They were overwhelmed by the destruction. Here's what's left of a passenger car. This used to be the door. Now it's twisted upside down. Rescue tools are dwarfed by an enormous train wreck. Tools like the jaws of life just aren't built for something as big as a train car. 16 people were killed in this wreck and 170 were injured. Rescuers worked 24 hours before the last victim was free. The engineer of the freight locomotives had traces of marijuana in his blood. Also, someone had deliberately disconnected an alarm in the locomotive that would have warned he was on the wrong set of tracks. He later said signals had come too late for him to stop his engine, but investigators say that just wasn't true. He was indicted for manslaughter by locomotive and sent to a Maryland prison. Little comfort for those who lived through this wreck. London, England. In this case, trying to make things safer actually caused the disaster. In 1988, British Rail decided its 50-year-old signal lights needed to be replaced, and they began upgrading their old system. But on December 12th, an engineer noticed that one of the signals leading into Clapham Station was red when it should have been yellow. Amazingly, he had to stop his train and use a trackside phone to call in the problem. What he didn't know was that another train was getting bad signals too and was barreling up behind him at over 50 miles an hour. The second train rounded a blind corner and slammed into the stopped train. The collision tossed wreckage onto the next set of tracks just as another train was coming into the station. The wreckage looks like something out of World War II. This enormous car was thrown onto a hill. This one was literally split open. Here, you can see where one five-ton car is ripped through the roof of another. Thirty-three people were killed in this train wreck, including both the engineers. Additionally, 120 people were injured. There was a year-long investigation that showed that the signal hadn't been working because it had been wired wrong by an electrician. Proof that when you ride on a train, your life depends on those signals you're passing. Next on train wrecks. Cars versus trains at crossing. A runaway train jumps the tracks. She's jumping the tracks. I can't hold on. I can't hold on. And a train hauling propane explodes.
wonder what's in those tankers flying down the tracks? Well, sometimes the answer's not pretty. Trains can carry toxic waste, explosives, you name it. Usually there's no problem. But when one of these tankers comes off the tracks, the results can be disastrous. Wyawega, Wisconsin, March 1996. The 1,700 people who live in this tiny town get a rude awakening one morning when this freight train pulling tankers loaded with propane derails in the center of town. One of the tankers explodes and soon this fire is raging. As propane seeps out of the cars, firefighters fear an even larger explosion. The wreck happened when an 81-car freight train rolls through town carrying a million pounds of propane. It hits a broken rail, derails, then smashes into a mill. Thirty-five cars tumble off the tracks, including the tankers. One of them goes off like a bomb. Incredibly, no one is killed in the explosion, but the fire is enormous, and the other tankers are leaking. It's the worst possible situation. A million pounds of propane in the middle of a fire. They evacuate the town and call in the National Guard. Special hazardous material teams are ferried to the wreckage in armored cars in case the tankers blow up. They decide to drain the tankers and burn off the fuel, an incredibly slow process that could take days. As the days drag on, the people ask the National Guard to take them back for their pets. They put on flak jackets, get into armored cars, and risk their lives to get the animals they left behind. It takes two weeks, but finally the fire is put out. As bad as it is for the town, things could have turned out a whole lot worse. Just ask the people of Murdoch, Illinois. A freight train carrying propane, alcohol, and sulfuric acid derailed as it passed through town. One of the tankers exploded and burst into flames. News crews gathered to record the scene. The fire from the tanker is so hot, firemen can't approach it, so they hold back and wait for the fuel to burn off. But things don't work out like they planned. One of the tankers overheats, then explodes. Amazingly, a tanker is blown half a mile away in the blast. The huge train car is dwarfed by this enormous explosion. Later, there's yet another blast as another tanker explodes. No one is killed in either the train wreck or the explosion but it's a weekend they still remember in Murdoch. Crescent City, Illinois. A freight train hauling tankers filled with 34,000 gallons of liquid propane explodes in another small Midwestern town. It starts when the train derails downtown. As the cars spin from the tracks, they rip down high-voltage power lines. The propane ignites, and suddenly the wreckage is covered in flames. The local fire department quickly responds to the 500-foot column of smoke. But they're unaware that the tankers are filled with propane. Finally, firefighters realize the problem and back away to safer positions where they continue to hose down the fire. But when the town's electricity is turned off to cut off sparks from the downed power lines, the town's water pumps are turned off too. And suddenly, firefighters can no longer keep the flames under control. The pressure inside the tankers build. Finally, they explode in this incredible blast. The entire downtown area is flattened and 15 houses are destroyed. No one is killed in the explosion, 
but it's so powerful that a mile away, people can feel the heat of this enormous blast. When a car goes up against a train, there's never any doubt about the outcome. A locomotive will wipe out your car every time. You're 40 times more likely to die in a crash with a train than in a crash with another car. Pay attention. What you're about to see may save your life. There are over a quarter million railroad crossings in the United States, and at every one of them, there's an accident waiting to happen. We live in a terribly impatient society where drivers are so anxious to get to the other side of the tracks that they'll take unnecessary risks when they come to railroad crossings. A train collides with a car at one of these crossings every 105 minutes. You may not think it can happen to you, but think again. Amber Scott found out the hard way. She was rear-ended in the fog as she sat at a crossing and was shoved into the side of a passing freight train. As she was drug along in her car, she made this incredible call to 30 miles an hour and you don't have to be on a long trip either people usually are hit by trains close to their home the impact is about 40 times that of a car hitting another car trains weigh hundreds of tons and uh, your car weighs about 4,000 pounds if your car ran over a soda can that's the exact same impact pound for pound mass weight Drivers who should know better insist on trying to outrun trains at crossings. Here, a school bus driver speeds under the gates while a train's approaching. He's risking the life of every kid on his bus. This school bus was hit when the driver stopped at a traffic light just after he passed through a crossing. He didn't know the rear of his bus was still on the tracks. Remember, to avoid an accident, when you come to a crossing, slow down. Look both ways and let the train cross before you do. Trains can't stop and they can't turn away from your car. It can take over a mile and a half to stop moving once an engineer hits his brakes. Anytime you go up against a train in your car, you lose. A freight train derails in a suburb. The world's worst train wrecks. And a harsh lesson about safety at crossings. ride across the country on over 200,000 miles of track. While most wrecks occur at crossings, sometimes train accidents happen in the middle of nowhere. Roland, Oregon, March 1999. A train buff is out with a friend taping freight trains as they pass when he catches a surprising scene. The wheat scatters right at the photographer's feet. Boy, Dan, you were right there in front of a derailment. He was standing closer to the trains when he started taping that morning. He hadn't 
moved, he would have been under this car when it derailed. Sometimes gravity can have a funny effect on a train. Here a load of pipes threatens and threatens, then finally collapses. But usually gravity's aftermath is a lot more depressing. When gravity takes over and there's no way to stop it, what you have is a runaway train. And one place to find runaways is the El Cajon Pass in California. They've had three. Every day, trains must descend the steep El Cajon Pass down into the L.A. Basin. On May 12th, a 9,000-ton freight train came up to the crest, tested its brakes, and headed down the grade. Cajon Pass is a very steep grade. This is a dangerous area for, for railroad operations because the trains are so heavy uh, that you have to make sure you, that you keep tight control over the trains with the braking systems and the dynamic brake systems on the locomotive pre to prevent them from running away. I can't hold on! I can't hold on! But somewhere near the top, the train lost its brakes. The train picked up speed. As it went faster and faster, the engineer radioed ahead for help. But the only thing to do was to hold on and ride it out and pray the train stayed on the tracks. I'm going too fast! I'm going too fast! But those prayers weren't answered. The train was going 105 miles an hour when it hit a curve near the base of the mountain. People were still having their breakfast when the train jumped the tracks, plowed down the hill, and careened into their backyards. The locals had worried about just such a disaster. Now their worst fears had come true. These three men look like ants as they stand by the cars. The train's sand-like cargo is thrown over everything, burying what hasn't been crushed. In all, 69 train cars derailed into the neighborhood along with all six of the train's locomotives. House after house is wiped out by the force of the cars that careened off the track. The wreckage just keeps on going. Finally, a block away, the locomotives lie smoldering. Firefighters and rescuers couldn't believe what they saw. Train wrecks are, are so devastating because of the energy involved. A moving train has uh, so much energy that has to be dissipated. Um, and when it wrecks, uh, all that energy uh, ends up in destruction and, and jackknifing of, of the individual cars. Special dogs were called in to find the survivors. Rescuers dug through the wreckage to find the injured, and people were pulled from this rubble that minutes before had been their homes. Ironically, the massive wreck was caused by a clerical error. The crew didn't know the real weight of the train. Making things even worse, the brakes on three of the six locomotives hadn't worked. It all added up to disaster. But unimaginably, things got even worse. The train had derailed on an underground gas pipeline. While the cars didn't break the pipe, the heavy equipment used to clean up the mess did. The gas leaked and 13 days later exploded. The same neighborhood where the train crashed is now engulfed in this firestorm. 11 more houses were destroyed in the blast. But the pass wasn't through with disaster. December 1994. Just before dawn, another runaway freight train barrels down the very same grade and rams into a train stopped at the bottom. It happened when an 82-car coal train came down the grade and was told to wait at the bottom while the tracks ahead were clear. Suddenly, the crew learned a mile-long freight train was barreling down behind them doing 50 miles an hour with no way to stop. Both crews jumped from their trains. A moment later, the two trains collided. Here, one of the locomotives lies on its side, buried in the dirt. These boxcars are piled on top of another crushed locomotive. The mangled cars burned for hours after the collision. The wreck was caused when the air hose that triggers the brakes was blocked. And without brakes, gravity took over. Less than two years later, it happened again. February 1996. Just one mile from the 94 wreck, another freight train loses its brakes. 
derails and explodes in the third disaster at the bottom of the El Cajon Pass. But this train is hauling nine tankers filled with hazardous chemicals, including 158,000 gallons of pesticide. When the train crashes, the whole mess bursts into flames. Like the other engineers, this one had no hint he was headed for trouble. He tested his brakes three times before reaching the summit, and everything seemed fine. But as he started down the grade, that status changed. The train sped to more than 60 miles an hour, with the engineer helpless to stop it. The crew jumped from the train, but the engineer stayed with his locomotive, somehow surviving as the train leapt from the tracks and plowed into a ravine. The tankers exploded and burst into flames. Toxic smoke rises above the wreckage. Towns are evacuated and 20 miles of L.A. freeway are closed. As the fire burns, noxious fumes fill the valley. Just approaching the wreckage is no longer safe. Firefighters have to be treated after exposure to the smoke. The wreckage is enormous. This is the locomotive. By itself, it's as big as a house. To me, the size of it was what really struck me. Big steel rails that 10 of us probably couldn't lift looked like pretzels. And I know people have described that before, but that's exactly what it looked like. Just bent beyond recognition. And these big, huge, multi-ton steel vehicles thrown off of the track, crushed beyond recognition, rolled, smashed, like, you know, just another force of nature had just taken a vengeance on these things. The engineer was seriously injured. Investigators later determined the cause of the crash again was a kink in the air hose that cut off the train's brakes. This train did have emergency brakes that could have prevented the wreck, but they weren't turned on that morning. Without them, the train was doomed the moment it started down the pass. Within weeks, all 10 of the largest U.S. railroads promised to install emergency brakes on their freight trains and make sure they were working to try to prevent any more runaway trains. So far, no more trains have lost their brakes in the El Cajon Pass. But locals can't stop wondering, have they seen the last runaway train? Coming up, the world's worst train wrecks. A train collides with a gasoline tanker. And a powerful lesson about safety at crossing. Every train wreck is a disaster, but some, because of the size and the number of people involved, seem more catastrophic than others. Here are two of the worst. Imagine you're on one of the fastest trains in the world. Now imagine it comes off the tracks and collides with a bridge. Eschede, Germany, 1998. Normally, high-speed trains are among the safest ways to travel. The German ice train carries thousands of passengers every day at speeds of 170 miles per hour. Its luxury cars are equipped with telephones, video screens, even a place to go online with your computer. It's a perfect example of German precision. But on June 3rd, 1998, precision turned to disaster. Just before noon, the wheels on Inner City Express 884 come off the track and the cars uncouple. Tragically, it happens just as the train is passing under a bridge. The train log jams into the pilings as passenger cars slam into one another. And the force of the collision snaps the bridge. The locomotive is missing. The engineer sped on, unaware he lost the rest of his cars until he reached the next station. People rush out from the surrounding neighborhood to help with the rescue. In a matter of hours, more than 800 workers converge on the scene. At the moment of the collision, more than 200 tons of concrete poured down onto the wreckage from the collapsed bridge above. Heavy-duty cranes had to be called in to uncover the cars buried below. If the accident had happened anywhere else, it would have been less catastrophic. But the derailed cars slammed into the bridge, creating a horrible scene of chaos and destruction. 
could have caused such a sophisticated train to derail. One of its wheels fell apart as it sped down the tracks. The train raced on for another three and a half miles without a problem. Finally, the car derailed, then uncoupled. The 1998 crash of the ice train remains a horrific reminder that even a ride on the safest, most technologically advanced train can end in horror. What was the worst train wreck in the United States? It happened on September 2nd, 1993. 10 miles north of Mobile, Alabama, 2.45 a.m. Most of the passengers on the Sunset Limited had already fallen asleep as the train rocked and rolled past the Alabama bayou. But up ahead, a tugboat pilot was lost in the fog, inching along trying to get his bearings. There was a thud when he accidentally hit a bridge, but the boat wasn't hurt, so the pilot kept going. Unaware, he separated the rails on the tracks up above. When the Sunset Limited hits the bridge, it never has a chance. The locomotive derails, doing almost 70 miles an hour, ripping the passenger cars behind it. They shatter the bridge like a matchstick. Then the whole terrible mess crashes into the water, and the locomotive explodes. I was just amazed. I'd never seen anything like this. One of these huge two-level passenger cars was completely submerged. Uh, there was a, a locomotive that had basically impaled itself uh, in the earth on the far side of this bayou. The bridge where the, the train was supposed to travel was completely gone. There were cars on fire. There was a fireboat in the area. It, it was just phenomenal. Never seen anything like it and hoping to never see anything like it again. I thought, oh my God, we're going to drown. And then I looked forward. I saw fire in the next car. Then, and everyone, of course, was screaming and getting up from their chairs. And we kind of looked at each other. We were like in shock, didn't know what to do. So, and when I looked at the car in front, I saw the fire and I thought, oh my God, the, the train is on fire. And then it disappeared. A passing tugboat happens by the scene and starts pulling survivors from the alligator and snake infested water. Passengers turn to rescuers, dragging each other to safety. The rescue was hampered by the remote location of the accident. It was the worst train wreck in Amtrak history. Investigators trace the wreck back to the tugboat pilot. No charges are filed, but investigators call for changes in both the way pilots are licensed and bridges are protected. The passenger train, I got people in the water, I got cars on fire, it's on the river. You need all the emergency vehicles that you can get to. You got to derail it with people in the water. That's right. Even to the Sunset Limited in Alabama and the ice train in Germany show there's nowhere to hide when something goes wrong on a train. When we come back, a gasoline tanker is hit by a train. And the most dramatic lesson about safety at crossings ever caught on tape. happens when a train collides with a tanker full of gasoline? Take a look. Mexico City, July 1997. The driver of a gasoline tanker truck tries to beat this train through a crossing, but loses. The passengers run from the train. But incredibly, as the fire burns out of control, other drivers continue to pass, unaware of the danger brewing beside them. Some people are even out on the street. The temperature keeps rising inside the tanker until... The force rocks a camera crew in a helicopter hundreds of feet from the blast. Miraculously, no one is killed. If a tanker truck doesn't stand a chance against a train, Imagine what happens when a train hits a person. The following video is a dramatic lesson on the power of trains. 
A train buff was at a station in Downers Grove, Illinois, when he caught this incredible scene. People assume the stopped locomotive is the one triggering the signal. They hurry across the tracks, unwilling to wait for the lights to stop flashing and the gates to rise. As the warning bells continue to ring, this woman wants to cross the tracks too. But she decides to wait. Then a man and woman hurry past the stopped locomotive, unaware another train is racing up on the next set of tracks. She wasn't the only one to cross without looking. Few of the others looked before they crossed the tracks. Today's trains are much quieter than they used to be. I often hear people say, oh, well, I'll hear the train coming and I can get off the tracks. That isn't true. You may not hear the train coming and all too often people do not. Remember, when the gates are down and the lights are flashing, wait. Never assume it's safe to cross the tracks just because you see one train has stopped. 500 people are killed at railroad crossings each year. To stay safe, don't drive around lowered gates. Don't race a train to a crossing. And if your vehicle stalls, get out and leave it. Railroads are working to improve the safety of trains. By paying closer attention, you can help make trains safer too.